Jesus is forever. Psalm 110, verse 4. The Lord has sworn, and he will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. What is a priest according to the order of Melchizedek? This gentleman is somewhat of a mystery. The only personal information we have about Melchizedek is found in the space of three verses. Genesis 14, verses 18 to 20. We next hear of Melchizedek 1,000 years later in Psalm 110.4, and then again after another 1,000 years by the author of Hebrews. Hebrews 5.10, 6.20, 7.1, 10 and 11, 15 and 17. He is briefly introduced, becomes a major piece in a messianic psalm, and finally is the focal point around which the superior status of Jesus Christ as king, priest, and savior is demonstrated. People have tried to identify Melchizedek as Shem, the son of Noah, as an angel, or as a pre-incarnate manifestation of Jesus Christ. We should see him as the story itself does, so let's take a look. During a border state's war, Abram learns that his nephew Lot is kidnapped. Abram determines to rescue Lot and return the stolen loot to its proper owners. After what we might call today a strategic skirmish, Abram returns victoriously with Lot, numerous other captives, and the recovered plunder. The welcoming committee includes Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and a faithful priest of God Most High who offers a blessing to Abram. Blessed be Abram by the Most High God, creator of heaven and earth. Worthy of praise is the Most High God who delivered your enemies into your hand. See Genesis 14, verses 19 and 20. Out of admiration for this remarkable king, Abram gives him a tenth of all he repossessed. His name, Melchizedek, means king of righteousness. He is king of Salem, or king of peace. He is a faithful priest of Jehovah, as well as a king and Abram's donation suggests that Melchizedek holds a superior position to him. Nothing more is said. Read Hebrews 7, verses 1 to 7. In Psalm 110, David gives dominion not to himself, but to a future king, whom he calls my Lord. This king sits at the right hand of Jehovah, a position of supreme authority. Psalm 110, verses 1 and 5, and he will completely overcome and subjugate his enemies. Psalm 110, verses 1 to 3 and 5 to 7. But this king is more. He is also a permanent priest of the Melchizedek variety or type. Psalm 110, 4. Like Melchizedek, this Lord is therefore both a righteous king in pursuit of lasting peace, he will rid the world of his enemies, and a faithful priest who is worthy of adoration. This is a new concept to David's readers. The functions of a king and priest were generally separate from one another. When the lines were crossed inappropriately, Saul lost his kingdom. Read 1 Samuel 13, verses 11 to 14. And Uzziah was stricken with leprosy. See 2 Chronicles 26, verses 16 through 23. This king was unique. His reign would be without end, and as a priest, he would provide a sacrifice for the salvation of his people. The writer of Hebrews brings Melchizedek and the Lord of Psalm 110 together in the person of Jesus Christ. There is no doubt that Melchizedek is a type of Christ. That is, he foreshadows, prefigures, or resembles the coming Messiah. 
please refer to Hebrews 5, verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 6, verses 17 to 20. Hebrews 7, verses 11, 15, 17, and 21. Jesus, the high priest, does not follow the Levitical order, which is temporal and incapable of stemming human waywardness. Read Hebrews 7, 11 to 15. Hebrews 8, verses 8 to 9. And Hebrews 9, verses 11 to 13. Jesus is from the order of Melchizedek, which is permanent. See Hebrews 7, verses 21, 22, and 24, and capable of appeasing God's wrath and saving forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Please read Hebrews seven twenty-five. Hebrews 8, verses 10 to 13, Hebrews 9, verses 14 and 15, and Hebrews 10, verses 11 to 14. What a king, what a priest, what a savior.